r slash ask reddit what's your scariest camping experience i was on a trip with the ymca camp with g and on our last day on trail we got up early to hike the last few miles to where the van to pick us up was we rounded a turn on the trail and could see the van in a weird swirling dark cloud on the trail ahead then the guy in front screamed and all of us were attacked by these big black wasps. I accidentally got on in my hand and it was the size of a cicada. I only got two stings but the two guys in front got closer to ten. We hauled ass back up trail away from the van and our counselor immediately started handing out EPI. Pens. But none of us turned out to be allergic. We hiked the long way around the wasps to the van but man. I was shaking the whole time. A widowmaker fell about 15 feet from us at like 3 a.m. Camping in very old rustic cabins in the mountains. There were uncovered windows all around and three doors. It was a big cabin. Two were locked with an actual lock. One had no lock. All had a primitive wooden toggle, latch to open and latch the doors from inside or out. Had no real concerns over that until I walked at night to the outhouse and a neighboring cabin had. A guy who just gave me the heebie-jeebies for no real reason but felt uneasy going to and from. Alone so late after that. Went to sleep was awoken just before dawn by something trying the door. The primitive wooden latch made a noise and I immediately woke up and grabbed my light to look out. The windows. All I saw was the glare but I surely didn't go back to sleep. Whatever it was surely saw and heard me startle awake through the windows. My husband next to me slept like a rock. When I was five-ish I slept walked out my tent and off a small cliff in NC into a lake woke up down. There then screamed until my parents found me. Found Leech on my eyeball at age 10 still my go to camping story. Fell asleep in the car which was carrying some firewood on the roof rack. Woke up with a puffy eye that both mum and dad were frustratingly you'll be fine about without even looking. Unlike their usual best parents vibe. We were playing cards and my mum let out this piercing scream and turned away from me. Family friend. Flicked off the big juiced up leech which had crawled out of my eye and was heading for my nose. I. Watched the leech burn in the fire while my eyeball bled for a noteworthy 14 tissues. We all got drunk and went to sleep late leaving most things out. Woke up in the middle of the night dying to pee. Except there was a bear sniffing my tent for hours. We could see his silhouette. Eventually the bear left after trashing everything. LPT. Do not leave cookies in your tent. Heard someone screaming for help coming from the lake. My father and I went down to the edge to investigate and found a distressed man who told us his friends had flipped their canoe in the middle of the lake and didn't have life jackets. It was also like midnight so I have no idea what they were doing out there. There was a small boat on the shore with keys in it so we told the guy to take it and rescue his friends. The owner came down when he heard it start up but he totally understood. Thankfully they were saved but those screams were haunting. Another terrifying thing was coming face. To face with a mother moose and her child about 30 feet away on a trail in the Rocky Mountains. I stood completely still and didn't make a sound but man I've never been so scared of an animal. Moose are fucking massive. I was camping in Zion National Park in late August 1992. The campground was almost empty by then. At 3.30 in the morning I woke up in midair. You know those dreams where that happens? I figured that's what it was. Then I hit the ground. Earthquake. Then I was hearing cracking sounds. A few small thuds. Then asterisk asterisk thud asterisk. Little bits of the cliff face had sheared off. Thankfully the campground was far enough from there that no one was injured. Had that happened in the daytime there's a good chance that a number of people would have been killed. The park was closed for a few days after that. And you couldn't get in or out for much of that day. As one entrance road was just gone.
and the other one a boulder the size of a car had fallen on it. That one they got open that day and they kicked everyone out of the park. Anyhow I called home to say I was okay. Everyone was like, why? What happened? Quote, it hadn't made the news or anything. Fortunately it was relatively mild. Just some local destruction. My buddies and I were camping in northern Michigan for a bachelor party. We were all around the campfire and most people were a little drunk. I usually don't drink to get drunk so I was sober. I noticed sticks breaking in the woods just outside the fire light past the tree line. Something was making wide circles around us. Never getting close enough to see. Just circling us. I couldn't get anyone to care. They were too drunk and having too much fun. I sat there with a large sturdy stick. Waiting and listening for what felt like hours. To this thing just circling and circling. Eventually I stopped hearing it. But I was prepared to go down fighting. Fighting. Solo camp in the middle of nowhere. When I woke up in the morning someone had made a cup of tea and. Partially drunk it in the middle of the night. No sign of anyone anywhere. I was supervising a church youth group at a privately owned camp in the southwest one afternoon. I was lounging in my anti-gravity chair when I caught a whiff of smoke. I checked the fire pit and everything seemed to be out. Then I look up into a grove of trees 30 feet away to see flames just starting to take off. I grabbed the fire bucket and doused the main flame. Then proceeded to use the nearby hose to continue wetting the area down. If I had not been there, the 50-year-old property would have burned to the ground. We later found a small chaired log in the little grove that had been smoldering. It was possible that one of the youth in our group had tossed it over there. But I doubt it. The host said someone else had been in that site the night before we arrived. So I'd like to think they did it and the log had just smoldered for days until the wind picked up. I just can't imagine one of the boys I was supervising being that stupid. But you never know. To this day, I still feel a tinge of fear thinking about what could have happened. Be safe with fire kids. When my current wife started dating, we went out camping in the fall. Leaves were down. Kinda chilly. Very romantic. In the middle of the night, we heard what we assumed was a two legged creature near our car being the man I was. I got the boots on and was headed out. Wife, girlfriend, hands me this shitty little pocket knife. As soon as I undo the zipper, I hear the footsteps running away. I'm all manly so I go check anyway. Upon returning to the tent, I'm faced with a .380 handgun pointed at me. That was pretty scary. She sent me into the forest with a pocket knife. Didn't want me to know she had a gun so it wasn't weird. Camping near Westwater Canyon in western Colorado. A torrential downpour hit about 3 a.m. It was pitch black. And I could hear rushing water in the clock. Clock. Sounds of large rocks banging around as the land slid around me. I laid in my tent shivering in fear. Man. This feels pretty mundane. But the most scared I've ever been was camping at a horse riding show, competition thing. The venue wasn't in the wilderness at all. Just a big park area. And we were basically camped out in practically a grass parking lot. Somewhere in the middle of the night. I was woken up by something kind of nudging my head. It didn't take long to figure out that a few of the horses must have gotten loose and were just grazing around the base of our tent. Now the thing is, horses are fucking big, and this dude was walking around in the dark right next to my head. It felt entirely feasible that the horse might accidentally just step on the edge of the tent, which is where our heads were. I considered making noise or swatting at the horse's nose to try and get him to move away, but spooking the giant horse standing right above us also seemed like a bad idea. In the end I ended. Up just sitting up in the tent until he moved along. It was all good. But it felt like we were just one casual horse step away from brain damage. When I was a kid we canoed to an island in the middle of a lake and pitched a tent to camp and fish. 
for a weekend. It was mostly pine trees and a few other types of trees. Canada. We put out the campfire and went to bed for the night. When we got up early the next morning there was smoke coming from the ground in weird places all over the island. The roots of the trees had caught fire underground. There were no open flames anywhere but smoke popping up out of holes all over the island. Luckily it rained. But we could have burned in our sleep. Sleep. I was hunting in the Yukon. And woke up at night to a bright sky and a loud roaring noise. Crawled out of the tent and watched a meteor hit the mountain right across from us. That could have been our campsite. This was 25? 30? Years ago? All our friends had was a map with a red circle. If we didn't come back in a month or so, we would be somewhere in that circle. Circle. Once in the wilderness me and a couple of other guys, drunk as we were, started howling at the moon only to inadvertently attract real wolves. They showed up at our campsite about one hour later when we were in our hammocks getting ready to sleep. No harm done. They sniffed around for a couple of minutes and then went off. Guess they were disappointed in what they found and luckily not desperately hungry. Anyways, I was very scared and tried to remain completely still and silent during this brief encounter. When I was a kid, probably around 11 to 13, my best friend's grandparents lived on a farm. Maybe 100 acres of forest with a few clearings and a house that we used to camp out in all the time. One night, a few of us were camping and we heard repeated thumps and screaming coming from the trees. We had literally just finished reading a book about Bigfoot in school and were positive that Bigfoot was out in the woods hitting trees and roaring. We got out of the tent, terrified, and walked through the woods towards the noise. Note, I guess people really do this kind of dumb thing. It's not just in horror movies. We eventually came to a clearing and found several of my friend's uncles trying to fix an old barn. While they were absolutely shit-faced. At like two o'clock in the morning. The thumps were the sound of them hitting wood with hammers. The screams were when they missed and hit themselves. Because of the alcohol, we were terrified. But now it's hilarious. Alligators. Everywhere. I was going to camp in a big forest that I live close by. It's a very dense rainforest. Like a mini Amazon. Until we arrived at a part where there were very steep passages and we had to walk on slippery rocks. Until I slipped on one of them and almost fell into a ravine that I couldn't even see the ground. Because of so many trees. If I had fallen there. I wouldn't be able to be writing this. IBS plus camping equals not a good time. Scary for young women. Had a man at a campsite get so wasted he was walking around exposing himself to women at the site. A group of girls, probably 20s, came over to us and asked for help. Me and a few dudes grabbed him and walked him down to the road. Had to contain his drunk ass for about 30 minutes before cops could arrive. Feel bad for all the women. Fuck that dude. Late at night camping in the desert. Heard footsteps all around our tents. Thought it was maybe some drunk guy from one of the nearby camps who was riding dirt bikes in. Stuff all day. Couldn't see anyone. Couldn't see any shadows. Kept hearing the footsteps. Literally inches from our tent. Woke up my friend silently and made him listen too. We were freaking out. Finally they went away. So I slowly opened my tent zipper to look around and see who, what it was, threw out a glow stick, and saw some eyes flash in the darkness turns out it was two white desert foxes, whose footsteps were somehow extremely heavy sounding. When I saw them they were on our camp table, eating all of our chocolate, oops, oop, I woke up, whiskey drunk, and stumbled to the spring pump for water. It tasted unusually gritty. But any port in a storm. Three cups later, I used my flashlight to take a look. Absolutely full of crawling planaria worms, I brushed my teeth with more old crow and my finger and crawled back into my bag. I learned what the fox says in the middle of the night. It doesn't say ringgating dingalingating. 
They sound like an old woman screaming. In the middle of the night, for your reference. HTTPS. U2.be slash zbipto 1 dlpm. Not really camping, but my first time out in the field at Fort Stewart. Ga we had a small herd of about 10 wild boars go tearing through our bivouac area. I didn't really realize how dangerous they were until I saw everyone hauling ass to their vehicles. I hadn't been assigned a vehicle yet so I just monkeyed up a tree and waited while they tore into our rations. Wrecked our tent. And then fucked off. Took M about an hour to destroy thousands of dollars worth of equipment. I am going on an extended backpacking and canoeing trip in about a week maybe reading through this. Thread ISNT a great idea. I was a kid and on a family camping trip. The rest of the family slept in the trailer and I slept in the Mexican hammock. In the middle of the night something was forcefully pushing the hammock around and it didn't feel human. It was terrifying. It turned out to be a deer rubbing its antlers on the hammock. We can laugh about it now. Wife's friend and husband were through hiking the at where they met another two hikers who they became friendly with and began to spend time and hike together. When they set up camp one night, a guy who creeped them all out came along and they left the campsite after he began threatening them all. He then chased after our friends who were fitness and gym people and got away. He then attacked and killed one of the other two people with a knife and proceeded to almost kill the fourth person who ultimately played dead until he left her after stabbing her a dozen times. Wife's friends were physically okay but quite traumatized. They finished their through hike a couple years later. The woman who was attacked and survived also went back out and completed her hike. HTTPS slash slash www.kiro7.com slash news slash trending slash man dash who dash killed dash army dash vet dash stabbed dash woman dash appalachian dash trail dash not dash guilty dash by dash reason insanity 76 gp6 kw kx bgfx evc w w k u r r v 7 qm I was tent camping in Arkansas around 2003-04, and the Blair Witch Project was still fresh on my mind. I was about 20 years old at the time. Around 2 to 3 in the morning were woken up by what sounds like a small child running around our tent crying and trying to get in. I was thoroughly freaked out. Finally decided to open the tent and there was a kid that couldn't have. Been more than three years old scared half to death and only wearing a diaper, I had lots of thought going through my head. But mostly, how the hell do I handle this? I can't really go campsite to campsite. The ranger office is closed and I am standing there in the middle of the night holding a child that ISNT mine, we had decided to call the cops. Figuring it was the safest thing to do. Just then a lady walks down the trail and is like how did you get out? The kid was saying mama. Mama and went straight to her. She nonchalantly said thank you and walked away. Now as a parent. I can't imagine how much more that would freak me out if it were my kid. Camping with my kids in the woods for the first time. They were very nervous. But I assured them that nothing was out there to be afraid. Immediately after one of my assurances, we heard something moving outside of the tent. They started crying a bit. And I said it was either the wind or maybe a raccoon a little bit away. At that moment, something came down on the top of the tent, something pushing in at four spots. They lost their minds with terror. Even I screamed, it was our cat. My wife had led him outside. And he made his way down in the woods to see us. He was young and had never seen a tent before and jumped on top of it right above us. This was a few years ago. And my kids still bring up how scary it was and how daddy screamed. Hiked the GR20 on Corsica. Stayed at a campsite high in the mountains. Woke up during the night by what felt like an earthquake. And discovered that a big pack of wild horses ran straight through the site. I really don't. 
understand how this could happen without any of the horses tripping over from any tents. Mine has nothing to do with danger or the paranormal, but with culture shock. I am from a place where there are zero raccoons. I d only ever seen them in a zoo or on TV. Went to America for the first time. Where we camped near Yosemite Park. Was absolutely scared shitless to see this huge, fat, meter-long rodent crawl outside of a sewage pipe while going for a pee at night. Just took a few seconds for my brain to figure out what it was looking at. In order to be able to laugh about the situation. But man. I nearly fainted. Foxes fucking foxes man. Late at night when they howl sounds like a person screaming bloody murder. Not mine. But a friend from college and her friend were gang raped at gunpoint camping in Maine by three. Unidentified individuals. Can't imagine it gets scarier than that. Turned the one girl from a vibrant artist to repeatedly attempting suicide. We were camping up in Canada in a small cabin. There had been raccoons trying to get into the outdoor trash cans every night. So one night, my dad had it and got out of bed while cursing and making noise. So we all followed so we could say him yell at the raccoons. And hash x200b. So as he went to the door my mom was standing behind him. Then my brother and I. My father opened the door and next thing I know we had all crashed down on the floor as my father slammed the door and fell back into us all. When he opened the door, there was a massive grizzly bear that stood up in the frame of the door. I definitely did not sleep that night. Camping in the Serengeti with Maasai tribe men as guards. Sitting around the fire when suddenly the Masi looks out into the pitch blackness. Turns the flashlight on illuminating the eyes of a lion 40 yards out. Just staring at us. I never heard a thing. Not camping. But in the woods. This was while in the army. Doing squad maneuvers through the ass end of Fort Benning. It had been raining most of the night. But nothing. Scary. We were halted in a small clearing. Surrounded by those giant ass pine trees Georgia has everywhere. All of a sudden. The wind started picking up. And strobe lightning was popping all around us. You know those. Wiggly guys. HTTPS. I.imager.com slash ic9tld.mp4. Well. The pine trees started doing shit like that. I have never felt so small and completely at the will of nature as that night. And I've done solo open ocean sailing. The next morning. They confirmed what we already know, we were danger close to an F2 tornado. There was one injury on another squad in our platoon. But otherwise the rest of us were unscathed. Camping on LSD with some friends. A Winnebago pulled up with three guys who claimed that one of them just walked out of a mental hospital against doctor's orders. The guy in question was probably 6 feet 3 inches. 300 pounds with a shaved head, exactly like the guy from Full Metal Jacket. They sat at our campfire until 2 in the morning talking our ears off. Except for the scary guy, he never said a fucking word. He just kept nodding his head and picking at his skin. The other two guys kept asking us to come, watch videos. In their RV on a VCR. Creepy deliverance vibes for hours. We had to ask them to leave and things got super awkward and scary. They drove off in the middle of the night after taking all our firewood. I've run into grizzlies in campsites before and this was much scarier. The bears just want food. These guys seem to want to rape and rob us. If not more. Not more. Lightning struck and exploded a tree maybe 200 feet from out tent trailer. When on a kayak camping trip the dead middle of winter. Having just recovered from a flu. High country of Victoria. Australia. We had an 8k kayak around a lake to our spot. Put in our kayaks at 6 a.m. Minus 2 degrees Celsius outside. Accidentally got my feet wet when putting the kayak in. Visibility was about 5 meters. Spent an hour paddling. Lost in the fog just trying to get out of the marina. About two hours into the paddle. 
about halfway to our spot. My feet are fucking iced and the wet had seeped right through all our clothes. My buddy and I decide to pull to the side of the lake to warm up. As I did my body started to go into shock. Muscle cramps. Shakes. Tingling at the extremities. Slurred speech. Unable to stand. Thought I was a goner. My mate stripped me and redressed me. Put me in sleeping bag and lit a fire then rubbed my feet till I recovered. We decided to just camp there instead. Cracked the beers and got on the piss all day. Ended up being a fucking awesome trip. Look after your feet. At a summer camp in Halliburton, Ontario. The kitchen staff got drunk one night and held knives to mine and another camper's throats on a secluded path. It was dark. They caught us by surprise. We were 11 at the time. It was one of those, can't you take a joke, pranks that left me with nightmares. Oh the 1970s were a time. A time. I am a city guy who discovered camping in my late teens. So I was unfamiliar with what makes what kind of sound in the wilderness. I was backpacking through M.T. Rainier National Park. And the trail had a lot of peaks and valleys. While I was in one of the valleys. Up ahead. I heard a rhythmic, WHMM. WHMM. WHMM, sound. In my head I thought, oh. It's someone's subwoofer, so I climbed the hill. It got louder. It was pretty loud at the peak. Then got quieter as I kept going. After passing the noise I realized, wait. I am miles from any road. There's no way that could be a subwoofer. And concluded that I came way too close to. Likely. A large elk or maybe a black bear. Poor situational awareness on my part. On my camping with my dad and an old friend of his. Old friend woke me up and I'm hit with this absolutely horrible smell. Like rotting flesh bathing in hydrogen peroxide. I hear something creaking. We see K-E-A-C-K it out and it's a bear humping my dad's truck. The bear left and we checked to see if the truck's D manager. It wasn't, but damn the smell was unforgettable. Old friend told me bears smell bad but that was the worst smelling one. I don't remember this one. But apparently when I was just a toddler I petted a wild bear until the adults chased it away with shouting and beating it with sticks. Does that make me a Disney princess? Went camping with my dad, his friend, and his stepson who I am still good friends with to this day. My dad's friend was a funny, friendly caring guy but definitely was rough around the edges. Well 20 years later he was indicted for murdering his sister with a conch shell the day before our camping trip. We spent a whole weekend with a murderer who had no remorse and showed no signs of being in any distress. Bufa Dave as we used to call him is actually a cold-blooded murderer that spent a weekend alone with us in the woods after killing his own sister. Me and some buds decided to go on a hunting trip out in the Canadian Rockies. Middle of nowhere we set up camp on a cut line. I shot a deer about 50 yards from our camp. My friends helped me gut it. After we finished we dragged the deer back to camp. But for some one reason something told me to look behind where we gutted it. In the span of less than 10 minutes the pile of organs was gone. We don't know what took it. Or what it was but we packed up and got the hell out. During a wilderness survival class one was sleeping with nothing but a tarp between me and the ground. At some point in the night I moved my head and was woken up by a chit 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 noise. I peeled back the tarp and inches from my hand is a coiled up rattlesnake. I immediately jump back, which spooks the rattlesnake and they slither away. The rattlesnake had slithered under the tarp and coiled itself under my head to keep warm during the cold night. When I moved my head I woke him up. Up. Went camping in deep Appalachia in a tent. Woke up to a weird feeling that I was laying on something. Then I felt it move. A snake had made its way under my tent and I think it was trying to get warm as it stopped moving. Right under where my back was. After me moving a bit it finally went on its merry way. I'll never forget how it felt moving underneath me. 
pack of wild dogs loudly running through my camping site right after I had made sure my campfire was out completely and was crawling into my tent. I was alone. Along East Ato Creek in upstate SC. I was about 19 I think. The fact that they were feral dogs was scarier to me than if they had been coyotes. I'm not sure. I've ever experienced that level of terror before or since. Had no idea what to do except be as still and quiet as possible with my hiking stick in hand. They passed on through yipping and yowling and kept going. Woke up to pee, ran into a skunk. Camping near a river. I don't think anyone knew I was there. I heard a bunch of trucks pull up. A bunch of people get out. Bunch of guy. One girl. They were threatening her. Even though I remember a lot of details. I don't think I can type up any more of this. I think she was being trafficked. I didn't have cell service. And I didn't have a weapon. I just stayed quiet until they all left. I will say. It was just talking. Nothing physical happened. I reported it to an NP ranger the next day as I hiked out. But. There wasn't much I could do. I feel sick writing this up. Eight years later. I hate myself for not doing anything. I can't camp anymore. This is harder to write than I expected. It was terrifying. Having wild horses trample through our camp in a sadig was pretty wild. Okay. I'm going to post a story I read here from another Redditor. Sorry. Because I think about it once in a while and it qualifies as a scary camping experience. A few. Guys were hunting. Made camp beside a small lake. At some point late in the evening. They spotted a flashlight across the lake. The person holding the flashlight began walking around the perimeter of the lake. The guys didn't really want to interact with a strange person at 2 a.m. or whenever. So they grabbed their rifles and left the clearing and basically hid in the woods. The guy eventually made it to their camp. Was clearly agitated. Called them to come out from the woods. And apparently fired a handgun a couple of times in random directions. The campers stayed in the woods. With rifles drawn on this guy. Nobody wanted to shoot him. Nor risk missing and starting a shootout so they stayed hidden. The guy with the gun. Stomped around. Kicked over a bunch of their camping stuff and threw one guy's backpack into the fire before. Finally leaving. I don't recall if the campers left or if they stuck it out and maybe stayed on the lookout. Buddy of mine walked out his tent one morning to a kangaroo lurking right thrre which then kicked him after a stare-off and it was fucking hilarious. I live in Virginia and sometime in the early 2000s I decided to go camping on the Appalachian Trail. I was up there no cars just mine I went to a little patch. Set up camp and it was about 10.30 when I was getting ready to turn in and out of nowhere a voice said do you feel safe boy i slowly packed my shit up put out my little fire and left and i have not ever gone back since 10 years ago i went camping for a weekend went out hiking the morning of the second day and pretty soon found ourselves off trail on a pretty steep incline along the manashi river we were about 100 feet up the incline suddenly one of my friends lost his footing and started to slide one the way down he took out my other friend and I watched them hit every rock and tree on the way. Down to the rapids. I climbed down to find my one friend dead on the side of the river. And the other taken away by the river. His body was found two weeks later two kilometers from where they fell in. His body. Or whatever is left of it. Is still in the river because when search and rescue tried to remove it from the logjam it was. Stuck in. The boulders on the river bank came loose and collapsed on top of his corpse. This was a very abbreviated version of the story. But overall a very scary day. So several years ago on our way to our yearly camping trip we rode in this old suburban with a broken exhaust my dad didn't have a chance to fix it yet and had been driving it to work without too many issues. Turns out the reason he didn't have any problems was because he wasn't pulling anything with it. 
With the added weight of out camper it turns out it was blowing exhaust hot enough to boil the fuel tank. My sister and I were complaining that the smell of gas was giving us each a headache but my dad said it was an old car and just smelled like that. Eventually he agreed to stop and look at the fuel cap. Turns out the pressure had overcome the seal on the cap and blown it open. Luckily nothing happened. And we stopped at campground nearby until my dad was able to get it fixed in town. The Suburban ran really well for a bit after that. We hypothesized that boiling the gas tank had somehow improved the quality of the remaining fuel. My family recalls that trip is the year we all almost blew up. Just two weeks ago, I was eating dinner with a buddy on a mountainside in Denali Natal Park. We heard a sound of rocks tumbling down coming from the steep hillside above us and my first thought was, oh shit landslide. I turned to look and about 10 feet away five caribou, two babies, were sprinting down the hillside next to us. I heard more rocks and close behind them, about 20 feet from me. A wolf was chasing them down the mountain, when it saw us. The wolf stopped next to us and stared for a second and then ran back up the hill to a little outcropping of rock about 60 feet away. It stood there and stared at us for a good half of a minute. Took a few steps towards us. Then ran away. We knew there was a wolf den in the area but wolf encounters are in DNP and I never would have wished to see one so close. I wasn't really afraid for my life since there were two of us and only one of him. But it was a very wild experience and my legs were definitely shaking. Camping in Utah. We had to stomp down tall grass to get the tent set up. I spent all night feeling the mice running up and down my body under the tent. When I was young, my family and I were camping in the White Mountains of NH. There was a bad storm that rolled in unexpectedly. And in the middle of the night, there was a loud cracking sound and a boom. A tree had fallen and landed on a woman sleeping in her tent not that far from our site. Needless to say she was killed. I remember being scared of the woods for a time. Especially during storms. I can summarize it with a single quote, Bear. Get in the fucking car sleeping under the stars, woke up with a skunk on my lap. We were staying in tents in Kenya. It is pitch black. As long and see nothing black at night. I heard a low rumbling sound on the other side of the tent wall. You know that sound a lion makes? I went from deep sleep to high alert in an instant. It seems that sound is programmed into our DNA. I have slept through bears rummaging through our campsite. I laid there not daring to move, breathing as shallowly as possible. Not 100% sure I did not dream it. After about five minutes I felt my wife reach over very slowly and grab my hand. She had heard it and was doing the exact same thing. I have been caught in storms. Been around bears and rattlesnakes. Got followed by a bison. But never felt the cell level terror as hearing a lion at night. We took pictures of the prints the next morning. morning. I had terrible food poisoning and had to constantly poop in one of the grossest outhouses of all time. I only had single ply toilet paper. Thought our tent was being attacked by three bears. Turns out someone's dogs just got loose and the light outside made them look gigantic. I was pretty young. Went camping with my dad in Alabama. It's late at night. The embers of the fire are dying down. We're about to go to sleep. When we hear what I can only describe as a bone-chilling moan in the woods, we looked at each other and decided it was trees rubbing together. But then it happened two more times. My dad grabbed the flashlight and I walked behind him with a big stick. Determined I would save him if something went wrong. Eventually we discover a woman lying on the ground. Not far from our campsite. She was on a hill. With her head facing down. Feet uphill. Continuing to moan. Turns out she had so much to drink that she could hardly talk. But she was also camping out in these woods with her boyfriend. They had a big fight and he drove away. 
Leaving her alone in the forest she had seen our fire dying and wanted to give us the rest of her firewood before she left too, but had tripped and was too drunk to get up. We got her back to her campsite and made sure she wasn't driving anywhere that night. I'll never forget that moaning sound though. Went to Guatemala with my GF. Did a three-day hike through the jungle to Tikal. Slept in a tent at two tiny ranger campsites deep in the woods. During the second night a massive thunderstorm was coming down above us. At 4 a.m. I woke up and heard some male voices and left the tent to check them out. Two guys with rifles approached me. Told my GF to stay in the tent because. Scary. She didn't comply and joined me. Turns out those guys were local hunters looking for shelter in the camp. Offered them coffee. They were more than happy. About 30 seconds later, the storm got so intense that a big ass tree fell and crashed onto our tent. If I had not left to check out the guys or worse, my GF would have listened. We'd both be very dead now. A couple months ago we were camping in our trailer with our eight-month-old and two dogs. Main bed is in the rear and dogs, pack and play kept in the front of the trailer divided by a curtain. And sound machine. About 3 a.m. our dogs were barking super loud so I got up to calm them down thinking they already woke. Our baby up. I go to the front of the trailer and the dogs are gone and the door is wide open. In a sleepy daze I peek out the trailer and my heart instantly dropped. Our baby was taken. So I had thought. I immediately reached down and he was sound asleep in his pack and play. Thank God. I whistled for the dogs and they come running back around the corner. My only explanation is that someone opened the door and was greeted by the dogs and took off. I was once solo camping for the first time in Haars, Germany. It was my first time going alone and I was very new to this. When I arrived in Wernigerode I started walking but the path on my map didn't exist so I went back. It was already dark when I returned to the village so I decided to sleep in the hills close to the village. After I set up camp one wanted to sleep but I heard noises. It almost sounded like a baby crying and screaming in short bursts. I really got paranoid over a 15 minute time. Slowly hearing the sounds coming closer. After a while the sound was so close that I decided fuck this. Put on my clothes. Went out of the tent and dragged it to the road. I packed everything and went into the village again and slept in the local park. Unfortunately there were no places hidden from the path so I chose to sleep as far away from the path in only my green sleeping bag. Next day I woke up early and got back. So now with more experience it was probably some bird and my paranoia made it worse than it was. Me and boyfriend were camping in a tent and heard a family of bears walking around right beside our tent. My boyfriend was already awake startled. I woke up and made a sudden movement and he put his hand over my mouth so I wouldn't speak and bring attention to our tent. Woke up the next morning and the bears tore our cooler apart and stole all of our food. I went on a road trip with some friends to Lake Shalon. We left late and got lost. This was before cell phones. We didn't have a map and trusted my friend's memory. So we pull off the road and decide to camp for the night at a grassy area. We have limited lights and quickly make our tent. We're woken in the morning by someone hitting the tent and screaming to get off his property. Wed inadvertently camped on some poor guy's lawn. We were just dumb 18-year-old kids but have never packed up camp that quickly before. Not scary but weird. It was only the second day in and one of the counselors had to go home because she couldn't sleep. With people watching her, she claimed one of the girls woke up one night and stared at her. The next night she's the same girl, walking around the bunks whispering weird shit. We woke her up and said she sleepwalks all the time. That morning we go to talk about it and she has no idea what the fuck we were talking about because Shed never slept walked in her life. In her life was wandering in Switzerland and put up a tent. As the night kicked in, 
I heard rumbling. Opened my tent and saw a shadow rushing down before me and crashing into the ground with force. Rock fall. I went rogue mode and just pulled the tent away from its spot. Just then, a gigantic rock crashed into the position where my tent was about four seconds ago. I ran away while pulling my tent with me until I found a better space to camp. Hiked 7.5 miles into a remote area up near the Continental Divide and was hit by a very intense rainstorm that night. Washed my tent, with me in it, about 50 feet down the hillside before I could escape. When I emerged, a bolt of lightning hit the mountain right above me, causing another small landslide. I put my fishing waders on, stuffed everything, still soaking wet, back into my bag, and walked all the way back down the mountain. Problem was, the trail had become a raging stream by that point, so I was following the flow of water, but it would occasionally branch off and plummet off the side of a cliff and into the river that was far, far below. I'd get a couple steps from the edge before realizing I had left the safety of the trail, with water pushing me even closer. Almost slipped and fell a couple of times. Nobody would have ever found my body. I'd still be just another missing hiker. First time camping. Was with wife and dog in a tent that the upper half was mesh and see-through. Woke up around sunrise to my dog growling at something. I leaned forward to check. There's a bear cub walking through our campsite. The scary part was that I didn't want my dog growling to attract the mother of the cub to defend it. So I pinned my dog on the bed and held his mouth to get him to be quiet till the bear left. Heart was beating out of my chest. Later I found out it was an orphan bear and it was friendly to humans and survived by stealing food from garbage, campsites. Snake in the tent. I was about 10 y o and camping in the garden with a friend. Woke up getting slithered on over my hands, arms and neck. The snake got scared and gave off a horrible smell. Likely a common grass snake. Not poisonous but quite large. I started screaming. Waking up my friend. Imagine two panicking ten-year-olds trying to escape a closed tent in the middle of the night. I feel sorry for the poor. Poor snake. It had disappeared once our parents got out and checked the tent. And sheer terror when I was a kid at Boy Scout summer camp. One kid left a couple airheads out on the picnic table. Everyone woke up in the middle of the night to no joke 30 plus raccoons fighting over airheads and going into tents looking for more food. If you've never heard that many hissing and growling raccoons at the same time good for you. I live in the UK so no scary predators around me. One night I was wild camping alone in a remote area of the lake district in some woodland. I was sat by the fire about 2 a.m. and I became very aware of something moving slowly towards me from behind. It was trying to be quiet but was failing. I was convinced it was a human. I reached for my mora knife and prepared to fight off a strange human wandering the woods at night. Then out of the darkness a huge stag came bounding about 19 feet away from me. Jumped over a fallen tree and took off in the dark. I both shit my pants with fear and pissed them. Laughing. Ah, uh, not really scary. But weird. My wife and I were in Glacier National Park. Up near the Canadian border. We were the only ones in the campground. We wake up in the early morning hearing sounds in the camp. My wife sends me out of the tent with bear spray. It was a mule deer or an elk. It was chewing on my t-shirt I had hung out to dry from the night before. It had chewed it to where it looked like fishnet. And absolutely destroyed the t-shirt. It was some time before I understood why this happened. But sweat equals equals salty. And salt is apparently sought after in the mountains. I had to carry that disgusting slobbery shirt. Back out. Ba I was camping once in the up in Michigan. In a pretty secluded spot with distinct individual campsites. It was in the fall. So dead leaves were all over the ground. When we were settling in to sleep, we started to hear these slow, consistent footsteps on the leaves. They'd walk around the campsite, circle our tent, 
Just walk all around without any clear goal and without stopping. Obviously we assumed it was some kind of animal. But when we rushed out with a light there was nothing. I mean no sound. No trace of anything. Once we were back in the tent. These footsteps immediately started up again, and they didn't come from far away. They started up right next to our tent. We repeated this whole rigamarole probably three more times. Because of how distinct and close and creepy those footsteps were, and we never caught even a glimpse of what was walking around. The next morning we were sitting by the fire and started hearing the steps again, only to look down and realize it was the sound of multiple small frogs hopping around the campsite. I don't remember what was apparently the scariest bear encounter we had when I was a kid. My parents each thought the other had put the cooler in the car. They hadn't and listened to a bear help himself in the middle of the night. The scariest experience I had was a storm. We were in a lakefront lot in a fifth wheel trailer when a severe thunderstorm moved through. It was fully dark, but the sky had a green tinge somehow. I've been in bad storms but this was different. The wind sounded like a train. We half expected to be hit by a tornado but there was nowhere to go so we waited. I was about eight. I didn't want to sleep in the tent with my sister so I slept on a cot under the stars. Woke up to a bear sniffing my head, neck. I was basically paralyzed with fear. The bear left me and went to sniff around for snacks. It made enough noise to wake my parents who then scared T away. I moved my cot into my sister's tent immediately after. Got woken up at 4 a.m. in a windstorm. Left the tent and got into the car for safety and a tree fell on top of us. Caving in the roof and blowing out the back windows. Thankfully my four-year-old was just fine. Didn't have comprehensive though so I didn't get a dime from insurance and my SUV was written off. Oh you've come to the right place. About 20 years ago in Pisgah National Forest. I was camping in a hammock for the first time. I didn't have a rain tarp yet. Leaving myself completely uncovered save for a sleeping bag. Now this was a trip from a summer camp. In the area. So there were about six other teens with me. One kid decided. Hey. Chocolate. That's not a smellable, right? And left the chocolate in his pack. Right next to mine. Under the hammock. You may see where this is going. Lo and behold. Around 12 o'clock. A juvenile black bear moses his way on into our campsite, looking for that sweet, sweet chocolate. As he was messing with the packs underneath the hammock, his back kept bumping into me. I was starting to wake up, but I was very groggy. I kinda thought it was the kid looking for something in his pack. The bear realizes that the hammock is moving and gives it a bat with his paw, like a cat with yarn, swinging me. At this point I realize this is not a camper and start screaming. The rest of the campsite woke up and we threw rocks at the bear until it ran away. The kid got a severe punishment. Edit. Spelling. Sp I went camping alone. Female with only my son who was about four at the time. When setting up in a fairly remote place, there was a guy who just stood watching us from about 100 meters away. His tent was all set up. During the night, we heard footsteps walking around our tent for about half an hour. No other noises. I sat up with a mallet in my hands for the rest of the night. When it got light, I went outside and saw hundreds of emu tracks all over our campsite and a friendly camper neighbor congratulating me on getting the tent up by myself because he wasn't sure I could do it but didn't want to intrude. A bear walked up in the middle of the day and grabbed my lunch right off the fire. I always hang my food pack where they can't get it. But at lunch while you are preparing the food that is tough was busy working at the fire and turned around to it less than 20 feet away. I just kept my eyes on it and back towards my canoe. Dragged it backwards into the water and back paddled out into the river without ever looking away. Just sat there and watched it eat my hot dogs. It popped open a locking cooler and enjoyed what it wanted then grabbed my entire food pack in. Wandered off with it. 
When it left I pulled back in and packed everything else up and started the paddle home a few days. Early and rather hungry. Hung. Moto camping in the woods of Utah. I take a sorta hidden path up a mountainside. I find a nice little meadow at the base of a smallish hill and think ah looks wonderful. Park the bike. Not really paying attention to my surroundings and head immediately up the hill to catch the sunset. And eat. I come back down just at dusk and start setting up camp when I notice large round dried turds. Lots of them. All around where I am setting up camp. Bear scat. Undeniably. It's too late for me to traverse down the path so I decided to wait it out. And they do look old. I set up a big fire just in the hopes that may scare it off. About halfway through the night across the meadow I hear the cracking of a large creature. Most afraid I've ever been. Spent the rest of the night in my moto gear making peace with death. I woke up early and was gonna get up to make some eggs and bacon and I found a large dildo on top. Of my sleeping bag. I was alone. The dildo was large asterisk and it looked well loved. Loved. During high school. I went camping in the Cherokee National Forest at a common. But not an official. Campsite with two friends. Everything went great and we went to sleep in the one tent we. Brought. Well past dark. I awakened to hear voices at our campsite. All three of us were in our tent. From where the voices were coming from I knew whoever it was was. Sitting around the fire in our camping chairs. My two friends both started stirring too and I. Quickly hushed them and we all began to silently panic. I have always carried a pocket knife. Even back then. So I grabbed that and silently waited. They eventually got up and walked away but I've never. Forgotten that night. This was also the same campsite that one of my friends and I got scared awake. By the loud howl of a wolf. It sounded like it was across the small creek that was right next to our campsite. Probably 20 yards at most. At camped on tilde 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 opiongo tilde 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 Bates Island in Algonquin in late July early August a male black bear was. There unbeknownst to us. It had eaten all the berries etc. By late fall. It had likely walked over on the ice in the winter or spring and then got trapped when the ice. Melted. It killed a couple who were camping in October. My older bro knew one of them. Them. Subscribe for more content.